call our workshop meeting to order for April 10th, uh, 2017. If you will, let's stand and say the pledge. Uh, Commissioner Pickens, will you do the pledge? Commissioner Goddard, will you do a prayer? Yes, sir. Yeah. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here. Help us uh, as we go through these deliberations that we make good decisions, Lord. And we just ask that you be with our family and friends as they make travels out of town. It's been great, Lord. We just thank you so much for Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Our first order of business is, um, and I think, Miss Allen, you're going to walk us through this. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you want to sit over there or sit at the big, stand at the big podium? Which one? It's all right if I sit. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm all not right. feeling very well, so I'm fine with have us. a seat. We're you don't fine. mind. I mean, I will get up if Okay. No, I want you to be comfortable. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, a little Ms. jittery. Allen, you have the floor. <laughs> okay. Well, at the May, March 28th um, Putnam County Board meeting, we discussed having a workshop today for two topics. One, to consider the appointment of an interim Putnam County administrator, and also discuss the course of actions and recruitment and hiring efforts for a full-time county administrator. So to make it an easier task to go through, I broke it down into two different tasks. Task one, consider the interim Putnam County Administrator appointment. Um, at the last meeting, you asked me wh what we normally did, and at the time, I wasn't prepared. Our um, current policy states general employees, when they're assigned to an interim role, are usually compensated with a 10% salary adjustment. However, this position is a contractual appointment, so what I needed to do was go back and look to see what we did historically, which was a number of years ago. Um, back in December of 2000, the board awarded a pay adjustment of $2,500 a month to uh, the person that took over for several months. That equated to a 35% pay increase, and I think things were a little better back then financially. I'm not sure. I wasn't here then. Um, the period of time was just over six months or so, but that was the period in which they did the recruitment and selection and hired the administrator at that time. So I, I have three options that you could consider. There may be another one that you have thought of or a combination, but... Um, some of the options I'm presenting today would be option one. You could appoint an internal employee to take on the additional responsibilities uh, with the pay adjustment, and this could be done with an immediate appointment if the staff member you select is willing to do so. A second option would be to appoint an external consultant to be um, in the interim county administrator position. And there are many places where you could recruit from, um, but we would follow our hiring practices, and the salary would have to be determined for that period of time. I would like you to be mindful, though, that process may take three to six weeks, so it might delay the appointment of someone. And then option three, the Florida Association of County Managers, also known as FACM, um, they have what's called members in transition, and that would be someone who's looking for an administrative or management role that's currently not appointed. They used to call them range riders, that program years and years ago. I don't know if you're all familiar with it, but um, sometimes you can enter a short consultant contract, and we do know uh, Attorney Manning has, was contacted by someone, which I have that information, that may be willing to come out here. Um, they don't live here, though, and <laughs> it would be a commitment of time while you go through the recruitment. So that's another option that you have, but that also would probably take about three to six weeks uh, following interviews, salary negotiations, et cetera, to get through that. So my um, staff recommendation, I took everything you have into consideration as well as past practice. I think... Um, 
probably to have an immediate appointment would benefit the, the county and to consider full-time staff that would be willing to take on the additional duties. Um, but due to budgetary constraints, and I, I look to see what others would do um, since our policy is quiet on a, a contracted employee, um, it would seem reasonable to make a pay adjustment from 1000 to a range of 1500 a month, which funds are available in the county administrator's salary line. Um, I know it's not in keeping with what was done in 2000, but we are in different financial times, so I, I kept that in mind. And that is kind of what's in keeping with uh, an appointment now that people are doing it if they appoint someone internally. So that's my recommendation, and that's the three options that I came up with for your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Uh, uh, commissioners, any comments? No. Commissioner Dove? No? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Pickens? All right, so um, I guess we're ready to move on. Option. Are we going to do it all at one time, or do you want to take it task one and task two? I, I do have a few questions um, of concern, and this is just me talking out loud. Um, option two is a concern of mine of bringing somebody in as well as option three. It's more money and someone who doesn't know our current situation and would have to get up to speed. And, and honestly, I feel like we're all doing really, really good right now, so I kind of like option one. My only concern there is um, having someone in place that um, might want to apply for that job. And um, what I've heard since I've been around here and been hearing um, is sometimes people get into interim positions and other people don't want to apply because they feel like well, they're going to get it anyway and there's no sense in me doing that. And I would rather us knowing that whoever is going to be that interim is not interested in, a point in, in becoming the county administrator at that point, only because I want to really open it up and see how many people would like to look at Putnam County and maybe possibly come or maybe they're already here. And we, we don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. So I see the microphone just got pulled over. Well, so. you and I, I have shared with you, and I possibly one or two other commissioners, I will not be applying. Okay. Well, you shared that with me, and I did not want to say that until you said that. Yeah, I... So I, I appreciate that, so... I think I could hold the fort for you, but I think my best role is your deputy and your budget officer. You know, Ms. Bopel, I appreciate that. Honestly, we're in trying times right now, and no doubt that I have confidence in you and you in the budget. I've worked very close with you here lately and even since you've been here. And uh, I, I, I'm glad, I'm glad about that. So, commissioners, we have a, a task in front of us, and that's task one to deal with. So, is there any other discussions? If not, do we have to? Do we have to appoint somebody today? Commissioner, you'll have to put that in. Do we have to appoint somebody today? We don't have to do anything, no. Okay. No, um, a word of caution, uh, Ms. Papel is by way of her job description appointed as the acting county administration administrator in the person's absence. However, to be fair, if we were going to appoint an interim during the hiring process, you know, there are many more duties and responsibilities attached and um, if we are going to make an appointment we could wait till tomorrow or another further agenda uh, but we do like it to start at the beginning of a pay week if we could do that not mid pay week it's just an HR thing in payroll <laughs> administration so if I'm understanding this <clears throat> if we move with the appointment her pay will go ahead and start to uh, compensate her if that, you would have to set the pay Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's a recommendation here, but that's, right. that's up to us. Correct. They gave you a little range, but you can go over, above, whatever. 
And you're now. here all weekend working too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask? Uh, yes, please. The appointment has no time limit. Well, if you were going to appoint an interim, um, it would be through the process of whatever you, our next topic, the recruitment and hiring. But I would say four to six months should certainly be adequate. Uh, whenever you're hiring for a top position like this, it does take a little longer, and you may have um, outside of the state applicants, and there's always relocation periods. But that seems to be the general rule of thumb, four to six months. So you'd be asking if it is Ms. Papel, a four to six month commitment. The, the motion itself would be um, would be to appoint whatever individual you choose at whatever, whatever rate you choose. Um, and, and that person would serve um, at will at, at your pleasure of the board um, until such time as a, a permanent uh, county administrator is hired. Or a replacement interim if you weren't happy. <laughs> yes. <Right. Yeah. laughs> That's another option. <laughs> okay. Say that you, our employees currently do not work at will. They work for cause, correct? all of our employees that we have in the county so you're saying that in this position as an interim it would be an at will position yeah because it, it is it is a normally a contract okay. position so I'm you can certainly um, would be justified in doing that okay. and, and again it's just for the interim position right. it would not affect that individual's other job duties if, if for some reason you know, you decided um, you wanted to go a different direction, certainly that person would step down from the interim role but retain their, their previous position. Which would be back under full cause at that point. Correct. But that's what I was trying to get to. Thank you. Okay, commissioners. Commissioner Pickens, you look like you want to say. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we were to go ahead and appoint somebody today, What's the commissioner's opinions on, you know, following up with, with fact? I guess it would be, um, or the FACMA, on maybe bringing somebody in temporary, um, you know, to get us through the budget process, um, and, and get us through that <clears throat> during the the hiring period for a permanent um, candidate, somebody with experience. Not that I'm saying Ms. Bell doesn't, or whoever we would, um, you know, would bring, would um, nominate. Commissioners? Uh, Good. I, I'm, I'm, I believe that Stacy would be able to help us through with this ourselves, myself. Um, I, I don't know about bringing in anyone else. I do have former experience with a budget in similar shape to ours for a city and bringing it through the crisis. Okay. I was just thinking that maybe with your experience, um, but having a, a um, maybe a retired um, county administrator to, you know, to help through that process might be beneficial. Maybe the only one I feels that way. Well, I, I believe that's something that could be uh, discussed later or, or voted on later. I think right now, if, if I'm following it right, we're basically looking at this appointment and the salary. Uh, and, and if that's, if, if, do you have anything to add? Anything well, I do. Um, Y'all vet it on out, and then I'll talk. <laughs> but the, <laughs> It's hard to make a decision on the interim without discussing, at least in uh, a broad way, what we're, our expectations are for the permanent. That's very important to me. How long do we want to take for a permanent? Yeah. Where do you want to draw from a national pool, a statewide pool? Uh, you know, those are important questions and cost above all else at this time, I think I don't need to share with you three that it's it's huge. Um, we have uh, a limited budget, and 
I think we just need to keep that in mind as we kind of come up with the best solution for us. Somebody said it a minute ago, what fits us? Who knows us? Right. That's, uh, Who knows best for us? Right. We do. We do. At this point. Um, and I think Stacy Papel's job probably for the next four to five months is the most important in this whole county, and I mean that. I'm very worried about balancing a budget. And I'm very worried, I'm going to say it, about putting more duties on you as a result I, of that. I would, if you appoint me, I would be handing some of my day-to-day -day tasks down to someone else. Typically, you don't have an assistant. That's what bothers me. Would it be new to them? I'm asking fair questions here. It would actually be Miss Allen. Miss Allen handled some of Mike Anderson's day-to-day -day duties when he worked part-time, so she would easily be able to pick up those day-to-day -day things. And your duties go where then, Miss Allen? Your day-to-day -day duties. Well, I have a staff of four to share. Um, right now, as you know, we have um, the bid out, but I don't see that it's going to be a problem. Okay. Well, I brought those things out for a reason. I, I gave them a lot of thought this weekend. Um, we got to tiptoe through the next five, six months. Yeah. And we got to be very careful. Think of them as eggshells. <laughs> well, and, uh, that was a concern of mine, too, and you're right. And, uh, but we do, we have people here that know us, know our position, and we don't have to get somebody up to speed. And I feel like we can go ahead and, and I will say, let's go ahead and say it publicly, if it gets to be too much and if the board decides to go in that manner, raise a white flag and holler help. And Absolutely. If that, if that board decides to go in that way, but you know, it's. Let's, uh, Mr. Chairman, we could. Yes, Let's sir. talk Go about ahead. what the expectations are of finding a permanent county manager at this point. I mean, uh, let's call on Ms. Allen to give us some of the expenses associated with a national search, um, statewide search, or just lend your experience to us, if you would, please. Okay, well, that's a good segue into task two. <laughs> uh, determine the hiring and recruitment process for a county administrator. and. On that task, I have four different options, um, which, uh, you know, one would be the traditional in-house, which would range anywhere without including my staff's cost, about $4,000 for a national search and ads. But that's where I think we could also benefit with our partnership with um, FACM, the Florida Association of Counties. They do have a program that I, I offered as an option here it would uh, help and assist with the recruitment and hiring process. And option one is without, or I'm sorry, option two would be without a committee, in-house committee, that if you wanted to appoint a board or a committee. Or option three is with a committee if you wanted to appoint it. But their cost is around $5,000 for that entire service, as well as some costs for advertisements. Um, of course, they wouldn't charge to advertise within their own group. but. Um, and then the fourth option would be to do an RFP to hire a group to do that. And I have a recent survey in here that was done in April of 2016 where it ranged between fifteen and $24,000 for an RFP for that. But um, as far as getting the word out on the position in a national search, it would range probably about $4,000. Internet is a great thing in getting the word out. And All if we if we use a firm, what would a firm? The firm, the rate, the most recent RFP I have on here was about um, 14000 to 24500 is what the yeah, bids came in. Yeah, I keep hearing 25000 to $30,000. Yeah, well, this was the one I just um, was able to get a copy of, and it is provided as your attachment B in this packet. Attachment A is the County Administrator Recruitment Services from FACM, um, the Florida Association of County Managers. And they will walk through even helping you determine what kind of county administrator you wanted. They would meet with the commission and have public meetings. And um, the second page is the table of contents and the overview of the recruitment process, a work plan and approach, 
uh, the timeline, the engagement letter, how they would go about the search and help and do that. They would work hand in hand with HR though because we would still take in the applications and provide them to them. But that's all done electronically now, so that's you know not a, a problem. We do that for all of our. Ms. Allen, what did they say about the timeline? What was it? Well, the timeline for which portion? Um, it's about a four to six month process. Either way you go. Yeah, um, because. Who you says have to, we can't shorten that? You could, but that's the general rule. You want to have the job out there for about thirty to forty-five days, give people time to apply. And then once they come in, we vet all the, the applications, see what they meet the criterion. But before we even get to that point, you all need to decide if your job description is what you're searching for and to give either me or um, Beckham or do an RFP for someone to seek what experience, education, and background you're seeking. I agree. They have emailed us, and they're willing to hit the ground running with us. Yes. Very much so. They're ready Fishers, to go. I like the blend of our staff and the uh, Florida Association of Managers, the manager, Florida Managers Caucus, whatever you want to call it. I just think that we get uh, people more familiar with, of course, state statute. And uh, many of these people have rural county experience within our state. And know what the expectations are there. I just think it's a wiser move for us. I really do. Commissioner Lyle, would you you said a blend of that with with who with HR and Putnam County HR and the uh, Florida County Managers Managers Association. What do you feel about a committee um, from our citizens to be kind of the vetting source first? I and think each one of us should appoint. A person to represent us that's okay. what's been done in the past I looked that up this weekend and um, I, I, I favor that I think that uh, it's best that way um, especially if we pick uh, you know somebody from the community with experience like professional with yeah somebody that's uh, been in an executive uh, position and familiar with this and know the, the stuff we're looking for the credentials um, that an applicant might have this sort of thing. Um, the city did it just most recently in their search for city manager, and um, and we certainly, I think, should fall. Most people seem to go this way, don't they, Ms. Allen? That is correct, especially yeah. on the group of fiscally constrained counties or cities. Yeah. It is most cost effective, and you get a, a great pool of people dealing just with public sector recruitment. Well, Commissioner Libel, I went to all the way to the League of Cities in Oregon and <laughs> you found a lot of the same information. That yes. There's a lot out there on the Internet, and it's really kind of modeling the same thing you provided to us today. So I'm, I'm well pleased with some of that. So. Well, that's why I broke it into two tasks, task one to appoint an interim and then two to move on to the recruitment and hiring of the replacement administrator. And um, this, I do have to say, even with or without a committee, FACM would be an outstanding partnership for the county. One, the cost, but the wealth of education yeah. background and the skill that they would utilize. And they're, they're used to working with citizen committees or not, um, HR staff or not. I mean, they'll do whatever we want them to do, basically. And they're ready to hit the ground running, as Ms. Papel stated. Yeah. I think that, that the understanding of North Florida is most important <laughs> yeah, I do too. in this. You know, um, somebody from Oregon <laughs> yeah, that's might be shell shocked <laughs> when they get here. Well, no, that <laughs> wasn't. I was just using their stuff. Even so, you know, I, know, I four right. south, it's yeah. a different Florida. It's different, yes, yeah. We we we. I like the County Managers Association because they they know what to expect in North Florida. Right. From Pensacola to Jacksonville, it's different than South Florida. Awesome. And then what I heard you say, Ms. Allen, is we're going to have to set the criteria of, and we had that in resolution currently under the county manager's position. Um, Ordinance 90-27, that's right, correct. Right. But there are some things it doesn't address. Um, we do have a current job description, which is um, the last attachment in your pocket, packet, as well as a hiring range. We don't have a salary range for the position. But um, I did some research on the 
the salaries and um, through FACM, again, every other year they do a survey and your attachments, attachment C and attachment D. Attachment C is the Florida Association of Counties by county along with their population and it has little highlighted orange counties on there and it tells you what their current administrator's salary is. Um, for fiscally constrained, they're highlighted in orange. But the, um, let's see, the mean salary was 136, the median was 124,000, minimum 52,500. So what I did was on attachment D, I took all the fis fiscally constrained counties of population of 32,000 or more and I added those and I came up with a starting hiring range around 104,600 and um, based on education and experience. Miss Allen. Yes. Since I've been here, I have always thought about this, that one day this might happen. And fellow board members, hear me out for just a moment. Mm -hmm. I would like to see a salary, no, somewhere around what the sheriff makes as our top law enforcement officer. But also like to see it based on population. Now just hear me out for a minute because our salaries are based on population. We get paid like 74 cents a person in Putnam County and that can go up or go down based on the census. <coughs> I always felt like if you want to raise, let's grow the county. If you, you know, don't, then we're stuck right here where we're at. But I like it based on the fact that it gives somebody an idea of where we're, where we're headed to. Um, so I think starting salary should be r right around what the sheriff makes. And I think it, as a caveat, we should be looking at trying to base it on per population person. I know that might be off the wall, but I, I think that has merit because we get paid that way and all your constitutional officers get paid that way. Um, yes, that is um, something I did take into consideration, and that's why I had a hiring range of 104 to 135 uh, based on the market of fiscally constrained counties in Florida as well as the population. And um, the sheriff is just under 114, somewhere around there, 113. So that's kind of like in the middle of this range, but I left the range. I. I kept it actual as my recommendation because you might have someone with not as much education or you know your criteria is spelled out you might want to increase it then you could increase that salary but that's that's why I came up with that range and how I developed it well I often look at Columbia County and we look really close to Columbia with the exception we don't have two interstates on us but Mm -hmm. you know, if, if and their salary's at 120 right yeah. currently. So somewhere in that, I, I, I like what you put together. So okay. that was just my thought. Thank you. I can support that to a the degree, uh, but not based off population. I think it should be, I like the idea, the concept, but I think it should be performance-based, much like we do our uh, economic development executive. If he scores the big enchilada out there and brings in the industry with thousand jobs, he gets a nice bonus. Why not do that for the county manager? I, I like that. You know, right. even if they were working in tandem, I mean, we might come up with a hybrid that's never been used before in rural Florida that might be successful. That's I think cool. you're on to something. We're on to something. Yeah. But um, like basing that. it on population, Commissioner Harvey, really, that's no incentive. Yeah, you're right. I like incentives. I do too. You know, it, and I've never heard of it being done, but that doesn't mean that we we need something out of the box. We keep yeah, saying we that. So that's and out of the box. The way I understand it, we will we're going to look at what we're putting out there. Correct. Uh, for and that's and just a suggested range, so applicants would know it could be from here to here. You don't want to give it the whole pay grade because they always want to go to the top end. Right. right but we right. also need to be mindful of what we can afford in our budget, so. Um, yeah, no, I, came out of, I came out of sales. I fully get the performance based. I do, but that's, uh, you know, I mean, in the county manager's uh, realm, I don't think they've, you know, they're going to say, well, that's not in our scope, but 
maybe we need to well, add we'll that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I could make a suggestion. Perhaps in the contract you could establish some goals um, in working with FACM. Maybe they could help you develop some yep. goals and objectives to, to meet and attain some of those ideas that you have in mind. I'd like to have some kind of wording that suggested a strong relationship with our economic development professional that tied them in there so that these two, you know, because the county managers, they do have their hands full in day-to-day -day operations as this sort of thing, but um, I think they could lend a little help. Brian, what do you think? Have you ever seen that? Well, yeah. you kind of need to come to the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> We are being. I mean, are we are yeah, we coming from outer space here, or is this something that might? Actually, no. When I was in Lincoln, Illinois, in Logan County, I worked directly with uh, the county administrator, or actually with the board chair, because they had no county administrator, and I performed a lot of those functions as county administrator and economic development. So, no. Well, he in turn can help you out. normally Absolutely. Can, with staff and some of the things that you you don't have in exactly your current digs over at the yeah. chamber you're and, kind of a one-man show right I mean I can't make decisions for the county and the county administrators that first bounce off when we have projects and those kind of things that come along um, to funnel to you so and you know Commissioner Lavell I like I really like this um, because I've been intrigued with the concierge service about holding some a developer's hand, a business mm -hmm. owner's hand, yep. walking them through the permitting process. If you have an incentive like that, they're going to make this happen. Oh, now they're absolutely. not going to bend the rules. I'm just saying they're yeah. going to they're going to walk through the process sure. and make sure it's done. And it also keeps yeah. Brian, our economic development professionals, edge by the secrecy that most of these uh, uh, outfits are are looking. Right. They, you can't put their business on the street through public records requests and this sort of thing. It's, right. it's hard for us to understand that, but I totally get it in the private sector. Yeah. You know, it's a, it can thwart a good plan. Or a, well, and I think connecting those a little bit closer together gives uh, the county a little better look at what we face on day to day. I mean, I know we have those discussions about, you know, why we can't market this piece of property or that piece of property or why we're not getting looks from these types of things. And I think that would help solve some, or bring some more solutions to yeah. more quickly to help us move forward a little bit better. And Mr. You know, Chairman, this board, this board is going out looking at new partners, mm -hmm. not just old partners, but new partners right. with surrounding counties. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we're really taking a proactive step about doing that to see yes. who can we be friends with and who wants to be friends with us. Yeah. And what do we share in common? Well, exactly. So with, with the county good. manager working in that detail, that would be a wonderful event. It would be. Okay. It would work very well. Mr. Manning? We have some statutory limitations on what's being proposed as far as a bonus for a county manager based upon performance. Um, statutorily, any bonus uh, would have to be offered uh, for all employees. It would... Uh, have to uh, be based on a policy ordinance or a rule that describes the performance standards and evaluation process. Um, again, it would have to apply to all employees and it can only be paid out of non-tax revenues and non-state appropriated funds. Well, aren't you the bearer of bad news? <laughs> <laughs> like so, like, that's over with, doesn't it? Kind of, <laughs> where did you come from? <laughs> that's a major well, uh, I think we can get around that. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I we think have an attorney that can. <laughs> well, <laughs> Commissioner Leibold's idea, I think, is a great idea. I think there's, we should look at other ways to, to do that. Well, his words don't, the council's words don't scare me off either. If we are successful at that level, don't all employees get a raise <laughs> called a COLA? <laughs> well, have Does to that be, qualify? It have to be more specific. No, uh -uh, it would not. All right, but we could create something. We could, potentially. That scare me off. That kind of builds a team, doesn't it? <laughs> it certainly can. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Exciting. Any further questions? <laughs> I think not right now. Thank okay. you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Thank you. We appreciate it. All right, so 
where are we at now? We still got task one to complete. Yeah, we and we so, and we, we got a little discussion on task two, which was important to me. Thank you for doing it. You're welcome. You're welcome. When if I could sure ask please. a question, um, when you said um, as far as to form a committee, would you think just four is enough? Um, I'm kind of thinking maybe maybe two per commissioner. Even Mike, eight. With, with just four of us, that's not a bad idea. Eight. I don't know if two. Um, and then maybe even the commission looking at eight. The, coming up with one person to make the ninth to chair it, just to throw that out. And I, 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 I'm going to step in here. I, I, that might be a lot, but that might be all right. But I do want to keep uh, District 3 in case the governor gets fast on appointing. I'd like for that new appointee to be able to have a say in that process so right um you know we could go ahead the four of us and pick two that would be eight or we could pick one apiece uh, that would be four whatever y'all wanted to do is fine with me i like smaller committees bigger ones are problematic i've just experienced it i think five person committee would be sufficient and how we pick the fifth i'm not sure but could we you know i thought about that over the weekend could we and this is just me thinking out loud. Could we have maybe our clerk fill in until the appointee has an opportunity to to appoint? Or would that be kind of what would that look like? Well, you're you're taking somebody from government. Okay, and you're right. There. Yeah, you're if right. it's going to be uh, business, private business citizens with corporate experience at the top level, it should be that. I hear you. Good thought. You could certainly do um, one appointment each for all of the five commissioners, understanding that for the time being that there's only going to be four that are acting until somebody actually is appointed um, to replace Mr. Stillwell. I do have a question concerning that because last week in our ethics class, um, we learned that these committees could be under the Sunshine Law. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So they would need your help to navigate through that along with HR's help, too. Well, if you go with the FACM, that is one of their recruitment steps. They would um, make sure that the committee understands their roles as well as FACM's roles and responsibilities. And maybe they could even help um, formulate your committee if you had you know some concern about that mr. chairman are you looking for that committee to be made up today it's on the table so let's talk of yeah I I've, I've prepared for it okay and I have you know I'm there all right mr. Yeah. Lavell if you like well, I had uh, the president of st. John's River College call me and I think Joe Pickens and well I think before we start do we want to go ahead and appoint it we ought to appoint a committee first yeah five five member committee. i think that if fac uh shows up with their uh, caucus of county managers with some stuff i'd like to have okay. our committee be able to meet with them right off the bat so your motion is to have a committee of five people one from every commissioner and doesn't matter if they live in that district or they have no it, that wouldn't okay. matter we, we you know i think the criteria are coming up with people with experience and um it was easy mr pickens called me and would like to chair it. I mean, who better than a past state legislature and president of the college? And I think that, you know, he's my pick anyway. I just wanted to make sure well, I got that in. Well, I think we would need a, we would need an action, um, a motion um, to establish the committee. Uh, and put, Start appointing. Right, uh, with one appointment each for each of the commissioners to the committee, and then with direction to the uh, FACM, um, to help establish the guidelines, the rules, and what the committee is going to be doing, um, what their role is going to be. Okay. The chair will entertain a motion concerning the committee. Move approval as stated by council. That was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a proper second? I'll second that. Proper you like second. that one, huh, Mr. Goff? Yes, All in favor of appointing a committee of five people appointed from every district no matter where they live in putnam county say aye. aye 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 opposed like sign okay now let's start with our appointments 
Mr. Lavell, you have an appointment. Mr. Pickens, President of St. John's River College. Okay. Mr. Go Goddard, do you have an appointment? Are you ready to do that? If not, we can we could do it tomorrow too. We could keep it going. Let's do it tomorrow because I would like to. That'll be fine. I, I have, but I haven't looked him eye to eye and make sure this is working. Okay. Oh, that's uh, important. That's important. Mr. Like I said, I'm probably early. I'm really no, you're fine. anxious about no, this. You're, let's get it going. You're fine. Like so Mr. Pickens called me, and I went, whew, that's perfect. Was that your pick, Mr. Pickens? Or? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't going to work. <laughs> Did he steal your thunder? He is always my pick, but I, I didn't think I could nominate Beat him. Beat you to that one, didn't I? I, I have somebody in mind, um, but I have not spoken okay. with them. I will speak to them tonight, and uh, I'll make my recommendation tomorrow. Okay. Um, I do have someone in mind. I'd like to go ahead and point John Browning to it. So um, uh, I would like to make that my appointee. So right now we currently have um, a committee of five and we have two appointees. The chair will entertain a motion to accept the recommendations. Move approval. We have a proper motion by Commissioner Libel. I'll second that. Proper second by Commissioner Goddard. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Okay, so tomorrow, gentlemen, if you will, if you're ready tomorrow, we can put that on as a, an item that we need to talk about. It can be part of your appointments. Part of our appointments? All right, we'll do it then. And uh, do, do you want to continue to move, um, I, I guess, the section, the second um, part of, uh, of, of this item two op, um, is deciding on, on whether or not you want to use FACM, it sounds like that's the direction you're I move approval heading. to use F, uh, uh, FACM. I'll second that one. I, I... Okay, we have a proper motion on the floor by Commissioner Libel, proper second by Commissioner Goddard. Uh, any discussion? I forgot that the last time. I'm going to get this right. Guys, I went out, look. HR will still be involved with the process also, correct? You know, that's what I had written down, too, and yeah, I wanted to right. Yes, I think this would, the, the motion would be, is consistent with option three in what was presented today. And that was my recommendation. That was um, okay. Retaining FACM, build, establishing a committee, and then having HR's involvement with three features. And the cost of FACM? It's about $5,000 and then some of the advertisement costs that we would probably still do in HR with their assistance. And there'll be some staff time involved. Who would be the staff person to this? Would you do that, Ms. Allen, or would you assign Lori? Or would it you would be Lori and I. Um, most applications are submitted electronically now. Sometimes they come in by mail, but um, I will be certainly hands-on as well. Okay. All right, we have a discussion. We're in discussion right now. Would you walk me through what that would look like when an application comes in? Let's just hypothetically say there's 20 applications on the table. Okay, well, how that would work, um, all applications, resumes, cover letters, all that can be submitted electronically. And we can either allow those on the committee to look at them electronically or we can provide the hard copies to them. We do both ways, depending on some of the manager's styles, if they like the, the hard copy. Um, part of FACM's role would be, once they're all printed out and distributed, they would vet the applications, make sure they completed the application, that they meet the criteria, and rank them. And then at that point, they would work with the committee and go forward. And if you look at um, the packet I gave you, of attachment A, the table of contents kind of gives you a rundown of how they would establish and meet with the committee, part of the search. But it's um, a very pain-free <laughs> process. Sometimes people hand deliver applications, but in this age of technology, most of them are submitted electronically now. Sure. Okay, Ms. Popel, real quick. Generally, what I've seen is they're ranked by FACM, then they're shortlisted by the committee, and then the, you guys, Perhaps we'll have a short list come and visit and and actually meet with you mm -hmm. That's what I would like to see yeah. is you know when when they get done And I don't know if I want to know one two three four and five I just want to know they're in the top five yeah. and 
then we have an opportunity to sit down, each one of us, with all five, and go through a questionnaire with your help. Right. And, um, you know, because you'd walk us through, or Lori could be there with us at times. And then we could get kind of a broad-based support at that point. Part of FACM's role would be to find out exactly how the process and how you would like to see it go. Okay. And if you wanted your top five, your top three, your top ten, I mean, they'll they'll take that information and, and assist you with it. But that is the, the most... Um, that's the norm. Plain, normal way is, you know, getting that short list together. Um, sometimes people drop out in the process, so we would What have I a did nice learn, too, list. is not to, even though it's your number one person, not to put all your eggs in one basket in my reading over the weekend because negotiations could fail. That's and correct. And, you, you know, you don't want them to, someone to think, well, I'm number three. Darn. I mean, that's, that's not what I'm going for. I'm, and yeah. part of the lag in the process is um, putting together the the meetings to interview the the perspective, yeah. and sometimes the doesn't work out to their their liking or your liking, and you move on to other applicants. So it, that's why it could extend a little bit longer. Uh, maybe they thought they could move here, but then they realized, you know, well, sure. Aunt Sue needs me, so I'm going to stay exactly. home. Even <laughs> more reason for that strong committee. Yeah. You know, I was very excited when. Joe called me over the weekend because he's the president of our chamber and is on the front line of economic development, working with Brian and who better, you know, with his past experience coupled. You just picked someone potentially that has that same past yeah, experience, okay. and I think it, it gets the best quality candidate up to the top. I agree. I'm, I'm saying that for the benefit of you, too, whoever you do. But that's what that's we're true. trying to do here is find, you know, a committee of people that just have that solid experience and know what our needs are. That's what's so important. I agree. Because uh, they're going to select the person that's going to be our uh, next general. That's yeah. right. Yep. Ms. Papel, real quick. Well, and another important thing to consider when you have a short list is not just how they interact with the five of you, Right. Potential five, but how they interact with staff, senior right. staff, and subordinate staff. I mean, good point. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, Mr. Mann. Um, I would. You still haven't voted on, yeah, well, on that one item, right? Um, as far as the specifics that that you're discussing, um, some more of the specifics regarding the the actual process that you want to go through and how you want. You know if you want them ranked or, or not um, and possibly um, the salary range and and going t through and fine-tuning the job description um, maybe I would suggest those things could be handled um, at a workshop with the FACM um, here to assist with those items I like that okay we do have a, um, a proper motion by Commissioner Lavel to accept the two appointees, and we have a second by Commissioner Goddard. Um, I just want to ask one question. Sure. Where we make a nomination tomorrow, I understand that. Where are we with the fifth? Do we have to wait? Are we waiting until? Mm -hmm. Wait till that appointee gets here. Okay, so how the committee is. What if that takes 90 days? There'll be four people on the committee. But the four yeah, people would be able to look, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, but it might go faster. Yeah. You never know how fast yeah, it I'm goes. comfortable with it. I mean, like I said, I've, we've got a couple of people from the business end of it, that, and one with the educational end of it, knowing our needs and ties to the legislature. I mean, um, I'm feeling confident. I don't think it'll get bogged down. I don't either. It, Not with I that, think it'll that move group. pretty yep. quick. So I understand your concerns. I really do. Uh, well, is there any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, we do have a proper motion and a proper second to uh, the point the two appointments. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The ayes have it. Okay. Um, we just still need to get back right now on task two. I think we pretty much handled task two, with yes. the exception of we'll do a workshop to set the criteria with FACM and move in that direction. So task one is still out there that we need to deal with today, and that is to appoint a interim manager, administrator. Um, so board, what is your pleasure on this? Well, I'd like to make the motion to 
but Ms. Papel as our interim county administrator. Okay, is that based on staff recommendation? Yes. Okay, so you're proposing- I also need to decide what you're gonna pay me. Well, on that, if, if that <laughs> needs to be done now, then I would say the $1,500. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Goddard to do option one, which is staff recommendation for an additional $1,500 per month as an interim county commissioner. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? All right, the motion dies for lack of a second. Commissioners? I would like to offer a motion, um, and I don't want Ann or Miss Allen, excuse me, or Miss Propel to be upset with me, but I gave this a lot of thought this weekend, and I'm very worried about your job with the health insurance and and all, well, I've stated all this previously, and, and I like the fact that Mr. Manning was in the trenches uh, more so, from what I could tell, with day-to-day -day business of the county until Mr. Leary retired. And with that being said, I would like to offer Mr. Manning, if he's willing to do it, in that role, and with the hopes that we make this process fast, what I really want to achieve here is get us a manager on board as soon as possible where we can get to work. You know, uh, we've got serious business ahead of us on, on multiple fronts. So with that, I offer your motion, Mr. Chairman. We have a proper motion for, what about salary? Uh, we do need to talk about that. If, yeah, let's offer that in a separate motion if okay. you don't mind because right. I wasn't ready for that. Okay, um, all right. We have a proper motion by Commissioner Liable to appoint uh, Stacy Manning as the interim county commissioner. Do we have a second for that motion? I, I don't, I'd like to discuss if we could. Well, we have to have we a have second in order to discuss. discuss. If we don't, it'll, the motion will die and we'll go back to square one. Do we have to vote on it? We do have to vote on it, um, but we can withdraw it during discussion. No <laughs> I've, been <time> to <laughs> I've been reading. <laughs> Okay, so seeing no second, that would die for a lack of a second, that motion. I, I wanted to hear Stacy's thoughts on you this. It, well, I think we just, re it died for a lack of a second. So if the commissioner wants to bring it back up. I'd like to bring it back up for discussion. I'd like to hear <laughs> Stacy's. Uh, Which Stacy? Which one? Let's go off last oh, night. Sorry, you're right. <laughs> yeah. I'd like Lyle. to hear Mr. Manning's. Uh, the the item needs to be second in order to have discussion. Then I'll second it. Well, we just removed it. So, Commissioner <laughs> Lyle, would you would you like to redo your motion? I'll reoffer my motion as stated exactly as before. Thank you, sir. We have a proper motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. Thank you, Commissioner Goddard. Second the motion. Now discussion. Mr. Goddard, you have Mr. Goddard, you had a request. I would like to hear Mr. Manning's thoughts on. Well, um, first of all, I, I want to say that, that I think Ms. Popel is, is certainly qualified um, to do that. If you're asking for uh, what are what would I like to be doing? Is that the is that the question? Um, I, I I also have have no desire to be the uh, county administrator. On a long-term basis, um, I'm a county attorney. I'm an attorney by trade. I've been doing it for 24 years, and that's 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 the career that I will continue to pursue and, until I retire. So, um, if that's one of the issues that that you're concerned about, um, I, I certainly would not be applying for that position. Um, I I wouldn't object to being the interim county administrator um, to help the county get through this process. I would hope that it would be a, a, a relatively quick quick process in, in finding a permanent administrator. I think that's what this, this county needs desperately. Um, so I would want that to move along as quickly as possible. Um, but to that extent, uh, um, I, w I would do it. Although I will say, um, I would expect the same percentage 
as, as the previous county attorney uh, received when he um, was, was appointed as the interim county administrator uh, previously. What was that percentage, Mr. Mann? 35%. 35 percent. 35 percent of whose salary? Of his, of his salary at the time. Hang on, I'll tell you how much that is. 127.5? 127.5 is Mr. Manning's current salary. Mr. Manning, is that open for discussion? Well, certainly your meeting, so. <laughs> That would be three thousand seven hundred and eighteen dollars and seventy-five cents a month. Per month. Per month. Oh. I think you know. I'm just going to say it. That, that gives me a little heartburn. I'm a type wad. Every one of you know it. <laughs> no, me too. The. I would like to see that reduced a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I'm just one person, but. Um, I think that the times economically were better. What year was that? 2000. December 2000. 17 years they ago. They weren't much better. <laughs> <laughs> and so. at the time, it was a $2,500 a month bump in pay. It was just 35% of that in that person's salary at that time. And my recommendation wasn't a percentage. It was just a straight 1000 to 1500 per month. Um, for a total of 6000 to 9000 for the six-month period anticipated due to budget. When you say due to budget, it, there is the county administrator's salary still is in the budget, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, there were payouts and yeah. so forth. It's not completely all still sitting there. Yes, right? correct, unfortunately. And we're going to use some of that money to go look for a new county administrator. So. There's not Correct. a whole lot left in that line item when that time comes. And, and there are other budget pressures. Mr. Chairman, what's your feeling and other commissioners on this at this time? I think that's um, steep. I think that's steep for Putnam County. And um, I appreciate Mr. Manning's willingness to do it, but um, I, I think that number is, is um, not in our budget for that. And that's my opinion. Mr. Goddard? <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm just about as cheap as you are. Um, <laughs> no, I don't see it in our budget. And, that, and that's our main concern is, is our budget. Mr. Pickens? Mr. Pickens. <laughs> it, it is a lot of money, yes. Um, and then, again, do we have to make this decision today? I think this decision is very important for our, our staff and yeah. Uh, going forward, even in tomorrow's meeting, and personally, I, I think so. Well, Mr. Manning, if I could, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Okay. Please go right ahead. Uh, what, you know, f feeling, I mean, hearing us, what, what, give us something to barter with. I mean, would you be willing to even do the job for a lesser amount of money? Well, I don't know. I don't know what was happening back in 2000 and 1999 that that would uh, is different today that would justify a lesser amount. I haven't heard it, so I, I have no reason to really uh, think that my services would be less of a value to this county than my predecessor's services. And, and I, I don't want to offend you, but I'm not looking at it that way at all. Um, I don't know how they arose, arrived at that um, amount, but I'm just looking at our picture right now in time. And um, I, I would, I mean, do you feel that the, the extra duty would give you or Ms. Propel a, a lot more time in the office? Uh, beyond Absolutely. The Absolutely. Yes. And, I, and I don't have anybody to, to give my work to and then give them a raise to do my other work, so. All right, commissioners, we have a motion and a second. We had discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. All opposed, like sign. Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay, so we have 
Yeah. I didn't. I didn't vote. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just hang on a second. Roll call vote. You can County. do a roll call, but I just. Uh, no. It just is. All right, I'll vote for it. Um, I said my piece. That was Aye. That was a yes. No. No. Okay. It, okay, we're back to square one. Commissioner Pickens, you asked the question, do we have to do this today? Um, and I've heard you a couple times thinking that. Um, I do think it's important that we do pick a person uh, to move forward, but we're not building the atomic bomb here, um, but we do need to show unity and um, I too have been studying all weekend as I'm sure each one of us have about uh, where do we go from here. So Mr. Pickens, I'm gonna give you the floor for a few moments on that. Um, I just don't know that we need, if we don't have to make the decision today on that, I, I, I think that I would like to do some more research um, and reading on this matter. Um, I understand that we need to have somebody in place um, but I don't know if it's imperative that we do it today. If it isn't, somebody explain to me why. Now, I know we need to move on in this process. Um, I also like the possibility, and I guess we could do that later if we did name somebody, if it is in the budget um, to, um, to look at a county administrator to, to get us, you know, through the process of the budget and also um, through the hiring process for that permanent county administrator. I'd like to research that a little bit too. Or what y'all opinion on that? I don't know that you, you know, you didn't have much comment on it before when I mentioned I'm, it. But I'm a little worried about the salary. Me too. I think it's going to bust that line. Item. Obviously, if I'm arguing with Mr. Manning over $3,500, <laughs> I don't want to spend $135. It would cost more. <laughs> yeah. It's a cost that would just. Much more. Yeah, and I think I think we're going to be fine. I mean, I see unity coming. I see people working hard. Um, I know that Miss Papel, you're here Saturday and Sunday, putting. Budget. Not every Saturday. No, and I know, I know that, and but I know that I, I feel the same way Commissioner Liable does. Is you've got a very important job right now, uh, probably the, the most, most important, important yeah. job <laughs> through the a, And yeah. the county administrator would have been said, spending considerable time working with me mm -hmm. on exactly what I'm yeah. doing. So that's where the brunt of his time, his or her time would have been anyway. Right. For the next several months. And bringing someone in is just, and this is just my opinion, and it could be just me, unless they know Putnam County, trying to bring them up to speed on what's going on. There's a learning curve and then it's a budget matter. It's a lot of different things for me that just don't, don't appeal to me at this point. So, uh, but again, Commissioner Pickens, thank you. And um, commissioners, we're gonna end this session in just a few moments. So is there any other, do we wanna go back and revisit um, task one or do we wanna put this off until a future date? And I think- um, Let me ask one question, kind of out, yes, sir, Mr. out of left field, but what are the, the two top staffers shared the position is that even possible you just said something that kind of registered with me that you do spend a lot of time uh, putting this thing together and, and I've seen it and uh, in the past but I don't know if, if that's something you want to consider or not I just threw it out there I would look to HR and our county attorney to answer that question <laughs> Their mic can only be. No, that's I, a, like the I mean, that's a tough one. You'd you'd really have to. It probably wouldn't. Uh, it would, it would be, be very awkward. difficult. You'd have to differentiate differentiate the specific. Say teams. no more. You both agree that <laughs> it needs to be one person. Well, um, commissioners currently too. We have an acting county administrator, our deputy. So uh, nothing's going to change, and we're just going to be able to move forward from here um, until we decide. Unless you want to decide today. No, I, I, and I am willing within the recommended uh, amount of money. That was going to be my question. Or is, she, is she willing to, to work in that I recommendation? Am. One, one of the things that impressed me, Ms. Papel, 
Miss Allen, they already have looked at this. This is mm -hmm. what we can do to make this work. Uh, so that's why I was, I, I think we're ready, but obviously. Well, the chair will entertain a motion if you're ready. Then I'll make the motion again. I still think it's a great again? idea again. State your motion, please. I state my motion that Ms. Papel take over as interim Putnam County Administrator. For the amount? For fifteen hundred for an extra fifteen hundred dollars per month. Okay. We have a proper motion by Commissioner Goddard for that, option one staff recommendation. That would be with the same caveat that it's um, at at the pleasure of this board at, and it, until a new permanent yes. was established. Yeah. Yes. At the pleasure and at will only on this job title for fifteen hundred dollars a month. Uh, do we have a second for that? Do we have a second? I'll second it so we can discuss it. Okay. We have a proper motion by Commissioner Goddard, a second by Commissioner Pickens. Now discussion. 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 If I could. Yes, Commissioner. Somebody Lyle. said a minute ago, though, you're going to turn around and, and pay more money to Miss Allen. So is it really $1,500 or are we right back to the 3500 that we oh. were discussing earlier with Stacy? I'm Manning. willing to assume the extra duties with no extra cost to the county okay, so it's just a fifteen hundred dollar monthly cost until we find a new for miss papel yeah i'm i'm not expecting any additional i will help out i do that now you do that now okay. well i heard that and i had to ask and also your staff will be able to they wouldn't incur any extra expenses my staff does that now as well okay. um, and we still have the executive assistant that shares um, both both the Stacy's offices. Yeah, Tabitha job shares between the two of us. Right. All right, commissioners. Any other discussion? We have a proper motion to appoint Miss Popel as the interim county administrator at will. Uh, $1,500 more a month. We have a proper second by Commissioner Pickens. Did you want to make a comment? Chris? I'm sorry. If I'm not out of line. Well, you're, we're in, still in discussion, so come on up, please, sir. I'm sorry I didn't see your hand fly. Right, I'll try to get it <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you, Mr. Pickens. I realize I've only been here a year, but I do have engineering public works running fairly smoothly right now and I do have a fairly larger staff and I had mentioned before I would like to be or entertain to be the interim administrator to get us through this situation I, I've dealt with Stacy I understand budgeting uh, I deal that the day-to-day -day notion you know, minutia that we deal with every day and all I'm saying is I would love the opportunity to help Putnam County through this period if it's within anybody's purview. Thank you, Ms. Tompkins. We appreciate it. All right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Monkey wrench. <laughs> yeah, just wait till the 11th hour. <laughs> oh, boy. Commissioners, we do have a proper motion in a second. We're going to call for a vote. Roll call vote, Tony. No. District 2? No. District 3, absent. District 4? Yes. District 5? I'm going to say no. <laughs> okay. You may. At this time. I know I made the motion, but that uh, there's a. Uh, you, you vote? Oh, boy. So, even if I had voted yes, it would be I bad. think right now this board needs some more time. Yes, we do. And I think, Table. That, I think that we would be better served with our acting county administrator right now. And let's revisit this at a future workshop where we can um, have time to think about it and go from there. How's the, how does my commissioner feel about that? I mean, you don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. To. <laughs> right. Press. Press gave us another. Time out. Oh. 
All right. Is there any other business that needs to come before this workshop today? All right. Seeing none, the meeting will stand adjourned. Thank you.